are the nine and four. Welcome once more to Griffin's Library. I am the recorder, your guide to the realms of Jamamar. From the rich and long history of her people to the stories of heroes great and small, it has been my honor to share my knowledge of Jamamar and her realms with you, my perceptive patrons, regular guests, and of course, new visitors to the library. Today, we will be exploring in brief the general culture of the elder race of dragons and how it differs from that of similar beings in other realities that one may be familiar with. Indeed, on first look, many of the dragons that live today in the realm seem very similar to those found elsewhere. Greedy, hoarders of material and esoteric wealth, often vastly beyond the abilities of those within their chosen territory to deal with in anything other than supplication or capitulation. Jamamar's dragons are often many, if not all, of these things. Unlike the vast majority of their counterparts, however, the dragons of the realms have a deep culture that binds and guides their race, and this culture endures far away from the eyes of mortals, and is strong as ever. Understanding this culture is difficult for those not of the elder blood that is the dragons, but it can be seen as a combination of might makes right in matters of leadership, with contests of secession or other high level matters of state being often resolved through combat, mixed with a personal code of clan honor that dictates how and when the dragons are to engage with each other. These rules are layered and often seeming very contradictory to those outside their culture. And as no complete record of them has ever been found or collated, although this is unclear if it's to maintain an air of mystique or if the code is somehow imparted to the dragons as an instinctual knowledge of their race. A dragon's status among his fellows is perhaps the greatest concern for a dragon because status within their clan ensures the right to establish a lair within favorable territory. You see, dragons are a partial exception to the general rule about cultures and governments of the realms not really seeking to control vast amounts of land or territory needlessly. The dragons have long ago divided the lands and the seas, clouds and the stars they inhabit amongst themselves and through their code and laws, they do battle with each other to shift these lines between themselves. The reason they are a partial exception is the fact that like their code, their territorial divisions do not spare any concern for those not of dragon blood, while aiming to ensure their affairs are also unobserved by the very mortals when possible. Also, the way things are divided makes no sense to the outsiders that may look in, with many clans appearing to have what is overlapping territories, or vast stretches of territory with no recognized ownership. Many population centers of any notable size are host to at least two, if not many more clans, with those living there none the wiser. Another feature of Jamamar's dragons is their strong ties to both family and clan. This is often lost on many even in the realm, as tales and reports of individual dragons far, far exceed any of reports of familiar groupings. This is a result of how status is gained and a place earned within their greater family and clan. Those that cannot prove themselves and secure a place within their clan directly must resort to earning a place by advancing their clan's goals with regards to the mortals. This is seen as both the most dangerous way to earn a place, as well as a necessary but distasteful thing that all dragons must do at some point. After their tasks are complete or their goal achieved, the dragon will then rejoin their clan and be granted a lair within the clan's greater estate. This is often the last they will be seen by mortals, barring those closest to the dragon in question. From this point forward, most will continue their contests with their brethren via proxies and as part of a much, much larger scale. No pun intended. You see, 
One of the factors that requires the clans to operate in this fashion is the simple fact that beyond a universal acknowledgement that they are the superior form of life to all others within the Nine Wings realms, with the Analar coming in a distant second, and their duty to keep the children of the Nine Wings strong and safe. The dragons are not united by any principle or guiding philosophy beyond the code. So while they all agree on their given task, few are in any sort of accord of how this task is to be pursued. The dragons and their individual cultures within their clans span the whole of the moral and ethical spectrum. From advocating the domination of all non-dragons, to calls for the genocide of their counterparts, or cries to remain separate to the mortals and their affairs directly, with others seeking to ally with the mortals. The only thing that the dragons can seem to agree on is that only the dragons are fit to lead Jamamar's children forward. With a race as potent, long-lived, and powerful as the dragons, these disagreements would shape the entire destinies over their ages. For every possible answer to the question of how to fulfill their divine mandate, there would be a clan that personified it, as well as one if not many that saw it as utter madness, if not a threat to their own answer to the question. Thus, many more of the dragons, and particularly their schemes, are set on the manipulation of their fellows, as well as to set and shape the direction of mortals nearby within their territory. However, if even a fraction of these plans that concern the younger races it does little to minimize the impact these plans can, or have, or the timeline that they can take to see full results. Generations can pass in the time it takes for one or two moves of a plot to occur, while entire plans can be enacted and countered in as many days. The dragons are a dynamic race in this way. These deep family ties also result in many of these plots being the results of many dragons across the ages, adding their own little bits at the right time to advance their clan's greater goals. In fact, the Age of Stars has proven this, as with the expansion of the realms and new worlds being added regularly, these have provided dragons with ever more fields to divide and try to enact their plots and plans against each other and for the realms. Where this might cause a mad rush, and with it great conflict, the dragons seem to have had plans and protocols ready for this occurrence. Often sponsoring colonization efforts to particular planets as part of these ploys and plots, many dragons saw this as a clear extension of their duties to Jamamar and the Nine Wings. And almost without fail, every world that has been discovered or even marginally colonized has found dragons either establishing or reclaiming lost holds and layers on these worlds within only a few months or years. Concerned with the advancement and honor of not only themselves, but the glory of their clan as well, dragons are far more subtle and restrained than they would at first appear to be to outsiders. While the typical dragon that can be found in tales and stories seem to lack these traits, it is important to remember that these are, in effect, the outcasts, or those looking to make their name, so the extremity of their behavior might be better understood in this way, especially when one considers how little regard the dragons typically have for any individuals that are not of their blood, or otherwise proven. The extreme natures of these more commonly encountered of their kind is easier to reconcile with the notion of their greater culture. And this is where we find the general state of Draconic culture today, rather insular, while having designs of the greater whole of the realms almost always in mind. They are and have been friends and foes to many across Jamamar, but only a tiny fraction are ever seen by mortals, whether they rush to rule or guide them. However, this is where we're going to bring this very basic overview of the dragons and their general culture to a close. I want to thank you for your time and interest. As always, please leave any questions in the comments below, 
and share your thoughts and the entry with those you think may enjoy it. I hope you've enjoyed, and I look forward to further exploring the realms of Jamomar with you, my perceptive patrons, regular visitors, and of course, new guests to the library. Until you find your way back to the library for another entry, by the nine and four, be well, take care of yourselves, and each other. If you'd like to contribute to the further exploration and explanation of the realms, please consider leaving a comment, a like, and sharing the video around. I read all the comments and make efforts to reply to each. Thank you for helping to grow the channel and know I look forward to each and every one of your comments. Other methods of support can be found in the channel's description. Thank you for watching.